So what have we got here then? Well this is the Nokia 5110 LCD display module. I believe these screens went into the um, earlier Nokia phones years ago and when they stopped manufacturing those phones a lot of these screens got sold off really cheaply got put into these little modules which are quite which is quite neat because it allows us to plug these into something like an Arduino and just have a play around with them and build this into some small little projects so I thought I'd hook it up take a look at it see what we can do with it so what I've done is built a little uh, menu system I'll, I'll explain it to you in a second I'll quickly go through the connections I've got on my breadboard here. I'm not going to go through every connection. I'll just give you a basic overview of what we've got. It is actually a lot simpler than it looks. I've got three push buttons here. We've just got pull down resistors, pulling them down to ground. Um, these pins, are, these wires are going back to the Arduino. So they're actually uh, pulled down to ground by default. And then when we push the button, they get pulled up to these uh, 5 volt lines. So this is the 5 volt uh, connection going back to the Arduino. Then we've just got the screen. It's got a header on the back so it just literally plugs into the breadboard. And I've got all these um, resistors connected down and then the lines are just going back across here to the digital I.O. on the Arduino. Now the reason we've got the resistors in series in them lines is because this is actually a 3.3 volt device. And the Arduino is uh, working at 5 volt logic, so it's putting 5 volts out across these lines. So we've just got these resistors in here as a very crude method of just dropping the voltage a little bit before the signals go into the board. I'm not quite sure why, but one of the examples I was looking at suggested these particular resistor values. And the brown ones I've got in here are 10k, and this one blue one here is a 1k, which is actually on the chip enable line. Not quite sure why that's a different value. I just went with what the example said. And then the last few connections we've got a VCC. As I said, this is a 3.3 volt device. So the VCC line is connected to the 3.3 volt output on the Arduino. And then we've just got ground. And that's about it for the connections. Like I said, I'm not going to go over every single connection because you can actually configure it in the software and connect this up to whatever pins you want to connect them to. I'll quickly show you what the menu system does and then we'll have a look at the software. So the three buttons here are used to scroll up and down between the menu items. So this is the down button and then this is the up button. And then we can press this third button here to actually select the items. So I can turn the backlight on and off. We've got the contrast option here at the top. Now every time I press the button it's going to increase the contrast by 2%. But when it gets to something like 66% I think I'm then switching it back down to about 48% or something. I can't remember the exact values. We'll look at the software in a minute. But it basically just gradually increases it until you get to the maximum and then falls back to like a minimum value and then you can keep increasing again. So if I press it a few times you should see the screen gradually gets darker and darker and then eventually goes back to a, a low contrast. I tried to sort of keep within reasonable values rather than making the screen so it's completely unreadable. So if I kind of mess up the screen by increasing the contrast and then this third option at the bottom called reset if I select that option it just resets everything back to the defaults so the default is with the backlight off and the contrast at 50% so a very simple menu system really let's take a look at how I did that in the Arduino IDE so we start with a couple of Adafruit libraries just makes our life a little bit easier when working with this screen. Now you can install those libraries by going to the tools menu and then selecting manage libraries. And just basically search for them. So 
So if we search for GFX, if we find this library here, you can see I've already got it installed. But to install it, you just click the install button. And then if we search for the other one, PCD8544, you should find this one. And again, you can see I've already got it installed. But to install it, you just click the install button. So that'll just make our life a little bit easier. Next, you can see I'm defining some hardware pin numbers. We've got our three buttons here and then some LCD connections. Got the backlight, clock, data in, data slash command, chip select and reset. Here I've got a couple of unsigned longs. That's just for some of the timing for the buttons. We've got the backlight status at zero, which is off, and then the contrast at 50%. This is the current item, defaults to one, the top item. And then we've got the number of menu items, which is three. And then these are the actual menu items. And you see I've got this space here Got some space either side of the strings this is just so that the menu item takes the full width of the screen so they're all 14 characters long so that when we highlight the item we highlight the full width now this object here is the actual object that we work with from the adafruit library and this is basically the constructor and we pass in all of our pin assignments that we defined earlier and then we can just work with this display object. Next we've got our setup function, which you find in all the Arduino sketches. Firstly, I'm defining my pin modes. So we've got three input pins and then one output pin, which is the backlight. And I'm just doing a display begin to just start that object that we're gonna be working with. And then we've got set contrast to 50, clear the display, and then we've got this display dot display method. Now this is just so that we can define lots of commands on the screen and then just display it once by calling this display function at the end. Next up we've got the main loop, which we'll just repeat in continuously. I've got three boolean variables just defining whether any of the buttons have been pressed or not so if a button has been pressed these variables will be true then I've got an unsigned long called current millis that's just a snapshot of the current time and I've got this button pressed variable so another boolean is just true if any of the buttons are being pressed and I've got another bool here called exceeded press interval now that's just if the current millis minus the previous press millis is greater than or equal to the press interval. Now, I think I defined that press interval at the top. Yeah, 200 milliseconds. So if we've exceeded 200 milliseconds since the last time we pressed a button, then this um, Boolean variable will be true. So I've got an if statement, which just basically wraps most of the remaining part of the loop. So if a button is pressed and we've exceeded the press interval, then this code will be executed. So the first thing we do in here is just snapshot the previous press millis. It's just a, the current time. Then we've got this little bit of logic here. If the up button is pressed and the current item is not at the top, then we decrease the current item. Or if the down button is pressed and we're not at the bottom, then we increase the current item. That just allows us to scroll up and down through the menu items.
by pressing the up and down buttons. And then we've got the three actual functions themselves, the three menu items. So if select is pressed and we're on current item one, that's our contrast logic. So you can see I'm just increasing it by two each time you press the button. But once we get to 60, I scroll back around to 46. The next one is the toggle backlight status. So if the select button is pressed and we're on item two, we'll just toggle the backlight. And then the last item is the reset. So if we press select and the current item is three, then we just reset everything back to the defaults, which is the backlight status will be off or zero and the contrast will be 50%. And then the last thing in the main loop, we just update the contrast, update the backlight and draw the menu. So if we take a look at that draw menu function, We're setting the text size to one, clearing the display, and then we're setting the text color to black on white, setting the cursor to zero comma zero, which is the top left. We're printing the word display menu, and then we're drawing this horizontal line with this draw fast H line function. Blue the star X and Y coordinate, the length and the color of the line. Then we've got this for loop, which is drawing each of the menu items. We're just looping around uh, between the number zero and two and drawing each menu item. And then finally, right at the end, we're calling this display method to refresh the screen after all of our changes. Now we called this method here, draw menu item. So let's take a look at that. That just draws one individual menu item. First thing we do is calculate the um, vertical position, the Y coordinate. We take item times 10 plus 15, just defines where on the screen vertically we're gonna draw this item. And then if we're on the current item, we're just inverting the text color to white on black instead of black on white. And if we're not on the current item, then we just use the default black on white. And then we set the cursor position to zero for the X and then the Y coordinate that we calculated earlier. And then finally, we just display the actual text for the menu item. So this is actually called for every individual menu item we want to draw. And you can see we're, we're looping over all three menu items and then just calling the display once at the end to refresh the screen. And then we've just got a couple of final um, functions here, one called update contrast. You can see that just sets the contrast and refreshes the display. And then this function just turns the backlight on or off depending on what our status is set to. So there we have it, a simple little menu system using the Nokia 5110 LCD screen. So I hope you found that of some interest. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions, then put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.